Hello, my name is Carrie Chan, the founder and CEO of Avant. I beat the often path by producing fish using cell technology um, without the need to catch, raise, or slaughter fish. Welcome back to the Beat the Often Path podcast. I'm your host, Ross Palmer. Joining me today is Carrie Chan, the co-founder and CEO of Avant Meats, the first cultivated fish company in Asia. So what is cultivated fish? Well, if you assume that it meant fish that's refined and well-educated, well, you are wrong. But hey, that's what I thought too. Instead, it actually means that they're able to create real fish using the cells in a process that's not dissimilar to brewing beer. They can take the fish cells and multiply them in a controlled environment, bringing you real fish without the animal killings, without those yummy microplastic seasonings that we all love so much, and without toxic heavy metals like that mercury that gives fish its healthy, wholesome taste. Carrie has raised over $13 million for her company so far, and in my opinion, it's the future of both fish and meat. So here's Carrie Chan of Avant Meats. Well, that's a great intro, but I have to ask you, what do these people have in common? Okay, Tony Robbins, Janelle Monae, Jeremy Piven, Victoria Beckham. What do all of these people have in common? What all of these people have in common? Um, They are the people that they are... They have done uh, something very uh, interesting that a lot of, quite a lot of people know them. That's true. They're celebrities. They're people that we should all look up to. And each one of them has suffered from mercury poisoning in their life from eating a lot of fish. So I worship celebrity culture. I aspire to be a celebrity. So it's my goal in life to get mercury poisoning. So how can your product help me get mercury poisoning? (laughs) <laughs> well, our product will help you not to get mercury poisoning. Well, mercury poisoning to begin with is because our ocean is actually very polluted. You know, ever since Industrial Revolution, it has been a very convenient kind of location where we dump a lot of the industrial waste and things like that. As if we know that people don't know, but then actually end up, we are also catching fish from the ocean and cumulatively. So mercury is something that accumulate into the the food system, you know, the, the food chain in the ocean. And then when we catch a fish, we actually expose ourselves to a lot of this consumption. And if we eat, if we eat too much, of course, then we'll get, you know, the poisoning. And our solution, uh, we so we pluck the cells from a fish and then uh, it need to go for a very rigorous kind of, uh, you know, investigation and review and checking that it is not contaminated with virus and things like that. So once that is established, we, we let them actually do continue to do the cell kind of thing. You know, in, inside our animal bodies, uh, the cells, they actually um, have a cell regenerative kind of like behavior and property. So given the right condition, temperature, nutrient, and things like that, uh, one cells can continue to split into two, two split to four, four split to eight. And then that's how we build our muscles and how our wounds are healed. And so we use this property to take it, you know, outside of, you know, the animal bodies and let it happen in a very, very controlled environment. I think it's a very, very cool thing. Uh, You mentioned on your website that the process is something like fermentation. How do you give the nutrients? Why is fermentation this new source of doing everything all of a sudden? Yeah, that's a very good point. I think that the biotechnology has been developing um, in various fields, primarily in pharmaceutical, uh, medicinal, you know, the production of uh, drugs and vaccines and things like that. And it is, it is more like a trend of how we adopt some more sophisticated and how, speci- how high specification kind of technology and solution and adopt it to more general and daily and, and daily use. Um, so uh, if we think about food, um, I mean, you know, bioprocesses, um, it sounds like very high end or sophisticated and complex, but actually we have been using bioprocesses to produce, um, you know, things we like to drink such as beer and, you know, healthy food like yogurt. So uh, Do I have to kill to... things to, to make beer? Do I have to kill animals <laughs> to make beer? Uh, no, so uh, it does not uh, check the box. Yeah, yeah. Then I gotta stop drinking beer. <laughs> Dang it! Right. I hope more yeah. men find out about that. 
They'll be very right. disappointed to learn. Right. <sighs> yeah. So the thematology is that we start with a kind of a seed, right? So the the idea is that for 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 yogurt, you know, the good bacteria that we need to have more in our guts is actually starting with a small population of them, and then we we know how what environment they like, and then we feed them the you know the 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 lactose and things like that, and then we keep them in the environment. So the same workflow as what we are doing with meat now. So the only thing is that the it's not um, the bacteria, but it is the cells, and then the the food we feed to them is not lactose uh, and not sugary stuff well a little bit kind of sugary because of the glucose and things like that and then you know the fermentation or the thing happening in a basically a very big pot where we keep the temperature right we keep stirring the stuff and then we get our output which is you know in this case it's a meat um yeah the the the, the cells that is muscle cells or the fat cell you know uh things like that that we put everything together to form the meat product have you tasted, you've obviously tasted this. What is your honest opinion of what it tastes like? What does it taste like to you? Well, it actually tastes very much like the, uh, the, 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 the seafood, right? For example, we have two products. We have a uh, fish fillet. Um, we have also something very Asian, kind of a specific ingredient called fish maw that is the swim bladder of some fish species. Uh, we've done multiple tasting. I tasted the... Um, I tasted the cells and tasted the inter intermediate products. Um, yeah, they, they actually carry the flavor of the um, of what is supposed to be from the from the animal proteins from the same as in the conventional version. So, if I gave you two fish sandwiches, would you be able to tell the difference if they were shaped the same way? Ah, right. So, question. I think the flavor uh, and the nutritional profile actually uh, is actually the strength of this technology as of today. One of the uh, things that we, you know, still a kind of uh, weakness and still need to be improved is really the detection, the mouthfeel. So uh, I think including us, including um, our peers in this space, we are finding a way to actually um, to improve that part and using different approaches, um, using plant-based material and using technology to encourage, you know, the, the tissue of this, uh, like the, the tissue engineering technology to make it more and more like a to, similar to the conventional thing. So I think that in a very good um, solution, a good product, I think they will be 90% similar. And uh, of course, product under development, you will you will still think, it will be more on the mouthfeel and the texture that is, um, you know, under development. Uh, the flavor is actually the strength and the nutrition is the strength of this technology. So I think it's time we wrap up this episode. Is there a final piece of either wisdom that you want to say or is there something that you want to promote? I'll let you end this episode now. I would I would say that, you know, uh, the technology, uh, we are working on a... So in the... In, in, in the uh, we have been actually thinking about how to do... In, in the past, you know, we have not thought about if we need to do good, uh, it must be, you know, philanthropy and do something that, you know, cutting, uh, you know, cutting, you know, the, the, the profit or whatever. I think now the world has entered into a space whereby there are a lot of technology enabled kind of solution that is, you know, have multiple uh, bottom line, you know, benefit to the planet, to the consumers, you know, people, as well as still, you know, making a very decent business and, you know, return on investment from that. I think that is something um, we we are one of the we are one of the we are one of the people in, in that space. And I think it is a uh, wealth kind of like uh, supporting. And for for those who actually uh Think about, you know, food safety and, you know, um, how to support, you know, sustainability with your own action in choice of food. I mean, you know, get on board and, you know, uh, learn a bit more. And as their product, you know, in, in the States and, you know, wherever you are, you know, go give it a try because it's going to be helping with the planet and, you know, also good for, for, for our health as well. Well, I couldn't have said it better. That's exactly the space that I'm interested in. And for those who want to check out your website, it's Avant Meats, A V A N T M E A T S dot com. Check it out. It's really cool. You have a great looking website. It paints a very clear picture of what you're doing. So, again, Carrie, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And with that, the official podcast is over. Okay.